The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. My pleasure to be here Monday through Friday, 11 o'clock until noon Eastern Time right now. And um, great uh, two hours. Thank you, Steve Rhodes. And, uh, of course, following this will be Larry Pesavento. And Thursday is the day that he looks, uh, I think this is the day that he looks more at it's the futures hour and he looks more at the commodities. This should be very interesting. Gonna talk, I'm sure he's going to talk about gold and silver. They're trying to form some kind of a base here. And uh, comes up after that, uh, Daryl Martin. And don't forget, Daryl and Tom have a... Four hour. This is a free four hour seminar they're giving. San Mateo, uh, San Francisco, a week from Saturday. This Saturday, of course, I'm giving my Master Trader series. This is about probably the last day to be able to get in. Um, let's just squeeze it in tomorrow. Reason being, I'm going to be sending out um, the PowerPoint part of the presentation. I want everyone to get it early so that when we come in on Saturday, we come in rolling. We just need to go straight into the questions, etc., and go right to all these different chart patterns that I discuss. So I uh, hope to get that out later today, or by tonight at the latest. And um, But if you are interested, just call TFNN, and uh, we can go through that and see uh, what, what, what the, the prerequisite is that you need to have the CD introduced in the Chapman Wave methodology, or if you haven't got it, you need to have been through one of my courses or perhaps used the Chapman Wave in your methodology in your, in your own trading, in your own position uh, 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 situation, being able to uh, uh, ascribe uh, the different peaks and, and to notate them. And... Um, most important about this particular session is that it's a review. So any questions that come up, we spend a lot of time. I got, for every question you have, I probably have at least a dozen charts that I could show to uh, demonstrate that. That's number one. Number two is um, I also look at all the new, newer things that I've been doing, the, the variations, the subtleties that over the last, I'm always looking at new, uh, new ways to um, invigorate to uh, secure, to give be better results, and I think our portfolio, in fact, our our calls and, and uh, picks uh, uh, for the last couple of months have proved that point, and my opening call. So let's go straight to, oh, then we've got, so we've got, we've got Daryl Martin, then we've got uh, Dave White, we've got Ken Shreve, and Tom O'Brien comes in 4 o'clock till 6 o'clock to wrap it up, and give his overview of the markets, and using and just giving us a wealth of experience at, at all the different ventures and the different ways he's analyzed markets. And, of course, that's invaluable. So well, let's go to the, the market itself. The Dow's up 56 at 14,000. Um, and 32, just for the moment, let me just quickly go to the E-minis. If the E-minis break above 1544.75, that will extend leg B in the daily chart. Remember, uh, the reason why I wanted to go uh, only long with no shorts the other day um, was because at, uh, what do I, at time flies, was it Monday? Yeah, Monday morning, my assessment was that we were about to go, that, that there, it was a leg A up in the Chapman Wave. I, I just have to show that chart. It was a leg A up in the Chapman Wave right there. Uh, right? Oh, it's a 120-minute chart. Of course, I knew there was something wrong there. There we go. It was a leg A up in the Chapman Wave, and that if there was a pullback, we wanted to buy that pullback because there was no other way of counting it. And if it was a leg A up, it meant that we should go to at least B, higher high, peak B, a higher peak C, and then a higher peak D, at which point we better be very, very careful. This is the way I assist it. So we went long the 200% uh, along the Dow Diamonds using the DDM, uh, the morning, uh, almost at the low of the morning of uh, Monday morning. Now, what's really important about this is that uh, while the DDM is really... Uh, it actually works pretty well. It's not really 200% um, of the Dow, but it's, it's, it's much better than 
because you need all 30 stocks of the Dow to really give you that, that, that kind of measurement. Not only that, it gets rebalanced, a whole bunch of things, but it really does work nicely as a vehicle, given that there's some erosion to the price comparative to the Dow, but it really works very well in being able to put up a certain amount of money get a greater percentage gain for that investment rather than putting up 200 uh, instead of 100 shares or whatever it is. And at the same time, you are essentially trading the formation, the patterns that are so important. So let's go. To, so this is what I was looking at. And look at look at the techniques. This is, this is what we're going to talk about on, on Saturday. I mean, this is the real thing, the live thing. Look at the nine-period exponential moving average. Once it broke above... Uh, uh, the Dow broke above on the 27th of Feb, went to 14,104. It turned that nine-period moving average back into key support, very important support. Now, it's getting a little bit extended. If, you had to, if I had to, say, put a Bollinger Band up or something like that, it's probably close to touching the Bollinger Band. This is a deviation level, a two-deviation level, and it's probably going to be touching it or very close. So it's getting a little extended, and what I'd say to subscribers is I would not be surprised if by the end of the day there's some kind of a pullback, maybe a doji close, worst case, maybe, maybe a minus 20, maybe minus 30. But the power of the up move says that we got it. I know I, I saw a brief thing yesterday on CNBC, um, something about Tom DeMarc, and then I looked up and it said 13, 13, 13. That means his daily, his weekly, his monthly charts are giving him those uh, 13 designations. Well, you know, I respect Tom, uh, Tom DeMarc. I, I've, I've studied and used his work periodically for decades. But when I overlap the Chapman wave with DeMarc's uh, um, work and this particular sequential, when it hits, it is so uncanny. It is, it is like the cycles. It is like, it's like when the, um, when these different lunar events come and they, and they, and it works exactly to the day. You just turn around and you say, that, that is unbelievable. How does it happen? And the big problem is when it misses, it really misses because that's the cycle date. That's the cycle date. And that's the same thing here. So all I'm going to mention is that I did see it. I have a lot of respect for Tom DeMarc. I, I am impressed when it's like when I get a peak air from my daily, weekly, monthly. You better be careful. And that's very much the same thing there. However, I have to go with my work. And my work says this is a powerful leg B. There should still be a C and a D. And this trend line that I show here, this is what my subscribers get every day. We look at this Dow chart in great intensity and look at it for all the, look at the MACD crossing positive, stochastic at 96%. Unless there's an event, some of the bank news this afternoon comes out and it's just devastating. I don't know why it would be devastating. They got all their money. Everybody's you know, doing okay. So the way I look at this is I have to stick with my work. And my work says that we should go into next week at the least waiting for a leg D at peak and potential peak D, I'll make some decisions. And that's the way it has to be. Okay, so I've got that out the way. And um, now look, here's another little thing. When we're looking at all these different chart formations, look, the, um, let me just see, 14.320.65, 14.318, 14, so it didn't make a new, now there's a new high. In the 120-minute chart, this is either leg F or new B. The, the um, VIX is down at 13.28. It's just, in fact, it's making a little oval pattern that could become a little mini um, inverted uh, stalk leg formation. But uh, we'll leave that for the, the VIX to tell us by the end of the day. And there's, there's these, these chart patterns. There are no technicals here. They're not even candlesticks. They're just bars. And these bars on the S&P and the Dow say, hey, nice move up. Uh, you might be getting a little overextended, but this is still maybe just the beginning of a move that, in my opinion, should go higher to at least leg D, peak D, and then maybe we can go higher, but we'll have to test and see what's going on at that particular point. And that should take us to, well, if we haven't even made... Peak B. Let's just imagine tomorrow's a lower high bar. That'll be peak B. 
That means that you cannot get C until Monday. Uh, yep, Monday. Then peak C on Tuesday. Leg D on Wednesday. So Wednesday to Thursday. Oh, right there. Options expiration week. Isn't that right? Yep. It's going to be a fun week. So let's go through the numbers. The Dow's at 53 at 14,350. The S&P's up 240 at 1543. See, the S&P's lagging a little bit. I, I don't like it. I, the S&P's only up 0.21%. Uh, um, Dow's up 37%. Uh, I don't know. I'm, that says to me, just be a little careful here. Um, the comp index is up six there again, lagging at 32.28. You've got gold up a dollar fifty. I did a lot of work on gold last night. Yeah, I'm also trying to finish up my 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 uh, PowerPoint presentation, not the live presentation, but the actual PowerPoint presentation. So I was trying to do everything last night. Um, and then what I say to myself is, you know, I just don't know if the gold. The nice move in some of the candles yesterday. I need another day at least to see what happens to gold because it just, there were too many discrepancies in the work. So I held off doing anything with gold stocks, right, at, at this particular point, although it's very interesting and some might have worked very well. So gold is up at 1576.70, up a dollar eighty. Silver's up 0 0.09 at 2889. Platinum, now this is very interesting. Platinum is doing very nicely here. 1593 up four. Copper's up two at 3.51. Yeah, these are a lot of work, but it's in the trading band, more towards the lower end. I will, I want to still see copper back at four before I, I'm happy. Uh, crude oil is up a dollar at 91.48, and we've got bonds down 23.30 seconds, and I think that's telling us the story. Bonds under all these conditions, when the market's been very weak, the bonds have not been able to spiral into the 120s, and that, the TLT into the 120s. To me, that is critical. I suspect that money really is not flowing, but I think it is my eye, my intuition, and the, some of the work I'm doing in other areas is telling me, yes, there is money starting to come out of bonds not a lot. I don't think a lot just yet, but it's starting to come out. I wish I could get a chart of the volume of selling in bond funds. In other words, I want to see, I would like to see, do I get a peak A, B, C, D, E, F in the amount of money being that's immigrating from bonds Elsewhere, I don't even care if it's going to the stock market, but it's coming out. That's what I really want to do. But I haven't got, maybe I'll try to search for one. Maybe someone knows of something like that. Okay, that's enough with this. We've got the dollar down 34 cents. Now, this is very interesting. Why? Because the dollar, DXY, the dollar index, has made a peak. Oh, wrong one. Dollar index, I'll say it again is making a peak G. An alternate count could say this is a, a D, but it doesn't matter. The stochastic is still at 88% and the MACD is turning down, but still very strong. I would not be surprised if there's going to be one more spike to a new high, recovery high in the dollar, and then we start to get some kind of a pullback. And I'm going to be watching that closely. I'll be back. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. During the break, I had a request uh, for um, email. Uh, Travis asked, do you have Amazon at PD using the daily chart? Yes, I do. Um, let's just do that because this is... Uh, very interesting chart. Now, let me just get rid of some of the lines here because it was a parallel. Uh, well, let me just do that. Parallel. That was important. Okay. So this is what I'm looking at. In Amazon, which is trading at 273.86, up $0.07, cents, there was a daily. Um, oh, thank you, Travis, for uh, reminding me about this chart. This is a pattern. In fact, it's a pattern I've written down in my book. For another stock, it had exactly the same pattern. I learned this. I call this the uh, Sears Holdings uh, pattern. Why? Because a long time ago, quite a few years ago, Sears was dropping sharply and made a low and then had a bounce and came back. And all of this is happening at the upper end, the higher end of its trading range. And it also happened at the lower end of its trading range. And I would remembered that. And what happened is it made a dreaded H pattern, the lowercase h, and had a successful test of the left side low. In this case, Amazon, AMZN, went to 255.11 on the 7th of February of this year, went to a peak C, pulled back, and then it went to 255.73. So it's only 62 cents higher. But that's a successful test. And look at the stochastic rising as it happened, a positive divergence, and the MACD. And what happens in a case like that very often 
is that there is a very powerful move that takes out the arch high. In this case, it's peak C minus at 2470. 274.30, and it goes very sharply. Often it goes all the way back to retest the previous high, in this case, 284.72. So the answer is, number one, great eye. Yes, absolutely, this is a peak. This is a, a peak D. Now you've got to be a little careful. Don't. I would not be thinking of shorting Amazon, and I'll explain to you why. Because look at that little pattern there. You see that little pattern there, that little triangle? Let me expand it. I don't know if you can even see it. Let me do that. Hey, why is it not updating? Update. Okay, there it is. Um, you see that little triangle? Uh, I, I dislike these triangles. I don't, you know, you can talk about disliking something that's still there. I just like them as a pattern to use. I rather like it as a pattern to confirm and that would say that this triangle with an inside bar and another inside bar basically yep w says that there should be a move in the direction that you've come from this little flagpole this little pennant shape and it should touch or take out the previous high which would be 276.68 if it does that that's very positive because what it does is essentially it sets up, if you want to think of it this way, as a little mini oval pattern. And it could be a propeller shaft from one move to a one to one on the upside. I'm saying these are the possibilities. But you have to look at the technicals. And in this case, the technicals say that the MACD is still expanding. The histograms, little vertical lines there are still expanding that there is a stochastic at 87%. You haven't got the on-balance volume confirming, but the relative strength is doing very nicely. So in that aspect, I would say Amazon is going to give us a great deal of, of information if either it breaks below 271, yeah, 271, if it closes under that, or if it spikes above the first level, be just to break the downtrend line, that would be 275. But absolutely, if it takes out 275, sorry, 276.49, then 276.68 will be the level to watch. Because if it takes that out, it doesn't even have to close above. It just has to take it out. That's positive. And that will improve the weekly, which says there's, a, there's probably a leg C, a peak C, and a leg D to a new all-time high is most likely in Amazon, unless, as I say, it breaks down. The breakdown would occur if it closed under 268 on the, on the weekly chart. Hmm, hope that helped you. Then there was a question that I had. I left over from yesterday, I believe it was. Let me just quickly find it if Doug... I think I answered Doug. He had all these things. He had really done a beautiful amount of work. God, I've had a couple of emails from people who really wanted to take my course on Saturday, uh, the seminar, um, the review, and looking ahead on the Chapman wave, um, but had some conflicts, and some people are just feeling they're getting going now, and they would think that it's more like level one that they want to, want to come to, which is fine. But um, I did get this question on NX on NLY. I think I answered it. You know, I do so many charts. I couldn't even tell you by the end of the day how many charts I've done. Uh, was it NLY? Did I do that in the black background chart? I thought I notated this. N L Y N L Y. Don't believe I haven't notated it. You know what? I'm going to do it in the black background chart just for fun. Okay, during the break, I will look at N L Y, and N L Y is, of course, Annually Capital Management. Is that what you asked about? Did I look at the wrong chart yesterday? N L Y. We'll be back. That's what Chapman Dow is only up 44 S and P's up 275. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now.
Just recently, on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF. And over the same two trading days, Market Insight subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we're back and we're looking at Enly Capital Management. NLY was the question was 15.28 right now, down two cents. Um, I believe the monthly is in an A, correct. Now, let me just do this because um, as Doug does, he goes through this in great detail. Um, backwards, like I like to do monthly, weekly, daily. So the monthly had a fantastic move back in 2006 from uh, 2005 from a low of 1090. Uh, yep, 1090 back in November of 2005. It went to peak A, B, C, D at D, the MACD and stochastic. The MACD was very strong, stochastic pulled back sharply. Price slipped from D down to under the two hundred, the nine period moving average and the two hundred period moving average, but then spiraled up in a single leg all the way to E, and that's where all the technical indicators gave sell signals. A beautiful Roman candle. That's the candle. If you want to learn about techniques, March of two thousand and eight. There's a candle that I call the Roman candle. Why? Because inevitably it blows up when it when the price comes to at least halfway into the wick it might bounce around but it's very much like the candles that i talk about the long-legged doji candle the way i describe that where i'm anticipating in this move that it's going to break if it goes below in fact if it goes below the 200 period moving average right at 1353 it's going to retest the low and break the low well it does exactly that on the uh, October of 2008 goes down to $9.94. The high was, what did I say, 21.20. Uh, uh, so that's a quite, a, quite a move down. 
right? 50%. Uh, yeah. Then it runs. It goes peak H is peak B. Stalls at 19.74 in September of 2009. And then what happens? It pulls back and it, it touches the 200 period moving average and it bounces. It's like, it's like a hot wire. It's not even like a trampoline. It's like a hot wire. Touch it. You take your hand away quickly. And then it goes to peak A and peak C. But underneath, each time it's making lower highs, not yet lower lows. And then all of a sudden it touches it once again after peak C minus at 1465. And it bounces, and it makes another bounce that goes A, B minus, and makes a lower low. And yet, it's still making higher lows, but lower highs. So what can we do? We could draw a trend line that says, there you are, a symmetric triangle. This is not an asymmetric. This is a symmetric triangle. And that's pretty much the parameters to watch. Now, the question is, it looks like with volume, using volume, etc., Doug says, there's a good chance that this could actually be just a bounce based on the volume chart, because he uses Tom's volume. And it looks like a potential ABC down. Maybe it's just a dead cat bounce. Yeah, I'd agree with you, except for one thing. The 200-period moving average is, is like a magnet right now. So that's going to give you a lot of support at the $14.90 level. Even then, it could make a dreaded H and a successful one if it doesn't go all the way down below 1420. That says, let's look at the shorter time frame to give us more information. That shorter time frame is the weekly chart, which I, I think I did, yes. Weekly chart, which went from a spiral down to 1465 in October of 2011, week of the 7th, to a peak A, B, C, uh, A, B minus, and starts a brand new buy mode that goes A, B, C, D. Goes to D at 1775, week of 14th of September 2012, plummets. Double bottom. 12, 1372 on the 16th of November, week of the 16th, 1377. So there's five cents difference. Now it's rallying. Not rallying very strongly, but r rallying at. The stochastics at 79%. That's good. Back D is good. I'm going to make a suggestion. The weekly chart is a new leg, probably peak C if there's no new high this week. Uh, still tomorrow to go. So, so far, we call it leg C, maybe peak C coming up. At the same time, <coughs> excuse me, at the same time, you've got in the daily chart, and this is going to be very interesting. Look at the daily chart. There it is. The daily chart has made that double bottom, 1372, 1377. I knew I'd seen those numbers before. I typed them in just a moment ago. It's made a peak ABCD, pull back, and it's making a brand new ABC, and we don't know if it's going to make that D. So you've got every time frame. It's very unusual to have this, but every time frame is saying, hmm, that 200 period moving average at 1565, which it broke down from back in um, um, September of 2012 and hasn't even been close to it until just recently, is like a magnet. So my suggestion is, if you're looking at it in terms of, uh, what did you say in the weekly? Yep, the, uh, 0 0.2, 3.8 retracement, etc. Yeah, if you're looking at the daily, and you have to use the daily, you don't really have a choice. The technicals are a little bit weak, 75% stochastic magnes, okay, but not great. And here you can see that the histogram is still holding quite nicely. That's the uh, above the 0% line. That nine period moving average is very important. So here's my, my, my looking at the chart. I don't see anything negative at this moment. If it closed below $15.05 to $15, that's kind of support. If it closes underneath there, then I suspect it's going to take a little while longer. But that magnet of the 1565 level is very strong. My suspicion is over the next three to seven trading days, it's going to make a jab for 15.65. And if it breaks above that, no matter how high it goes, 15.98 is the 200 period simple moving average. It's going to be resistance. And my suspicion is it's going to come back and retest 15.65. So what would I do? I'd do this. I've got a big rectangle, wrong color, but I'll show it to you nevertheless. Coming up right there. That is the trading range 
that we've got to watch for uh, for the color blue. So I'm going to actually raise it a little bit. I'm not going to make it that high. Right on 15. 15 is the low you've got to watch. But anything on the upside, the high that it has to take out is 15.53 for leg D. My suspicion is it will do that, and then it will bump into resistance. So that's the analysis. Is it a trade? Personally, I don't know why I spend so much time on this, because I don't see anything in it right now. That was just a very, very interesting uh, technical challenge. Um, so what do I see? I see the biases towards the upside. I don't have anything on it now to say to me that it's worth putting money in um, because on a percentage basis, yeah, 35 cents or so is nice, but that's not really the trade. The trade would be is if I see that the daily is starting to work really well, then 1645 becomes the target on the weekly. That's different. Then on any pullback after leg D, I'll say, great. Now I want to be looking to buy it for that kind of up, upward movement. Okay, so we did that. Had another question. I can't remember what it was. Uh, MUB. Somebody asked me about MUB. MUB, of course. Oops, I think I'm in the wrong color. The wrong color. Wow, look at that. Let me go to this in the white chart. Although it's probably more dramatic on the black chart. MUB. This is not good. Yeah, this is this is really quite positive for the market. MUB is the iShares S&P National Municipal Bond Fund. It made a peak F in the daily, a peak E in the in the in the monthly, and on the daily, uh, the weekly was peak F. Uh, there it is. Oh, double top, peak E, and then peak F. So this is going to be very important. I do see a trading range as possible, but boy, only. Uh, uh, to test that wick again, oh, that would be not good. That would be a negative. But the wick that I'm looking at is the low of 109.17. So it sounds like it's not a big deal. It's only two points away. But, folks, we're talking about bond fund, municipal bond fund. Uh, this is probably tax-free. I'm not sure. But if it is tax-free bond fund, you know, every every couple of points is capital. No matter how much you're getting in the dividends, uh, in your interest rate, it's just... Uh, uh, that ain't that ain't good, and it made a peak F in the uh, so I've got F daily, F weekly, and E monthly. Oh my goodness, <laughs> got to be careful of bonds, folks. And I the reason why I haven't done anything about like buying the TBT or, or trading the TLT. You can do it on a shorter term basis, absolutely. And uh, but the whole thing about this is that. Uh, I think the Fed is still there to prop it up. So I don't see a big smash. I do see an orderly move to the downside, which is unfortunate for those who have you know, uh, municipal bonds, etc. But at the same time, I'm really looking at this and saying, Whoa. I, I'm, I'm really convinced. I don't think there's a mass migration, but I think that money is starting to... I, I, I mean, we've done it a, how many times in the you know, years and years that we've been looking at markets have we seen that the public always comes in for a major top. They always come in. From the moment you start making new highs, that's where they turn around. They say, oh, my God, I haven't, oh, geez, I've been shorting all the way up. Or I haven't been in or I've been. Actually, if they've been shorting, they're savvy enough to have money in the market. So they might have other funds in the market. They're shorting other other things. But the majority of people who who, who were listening to the news would just – that's what I said in my in my opening call, my, my, my Dow chart the other day. I said, has anybody heard an apology from the media to say, listen, everybody out there, it wasn't the Republicans, it wasn't the Democrats, it wasn't the president, it was us. We scared the big jillies out of you. I mean, we just made this a big thing every time, and the market just kind of ignored it. You'll never hear an apology. Because they don't even realize that they're doing anything wrong. They're just reporting the news. But they're exacerbating. They are increasing the fear factor. And that's the reason why even now we don't see party hats. Hey, go to a party. Have uh, See anybody that you haven't seen for a while. Is the, is the first thing they say, uh, have, have you bought Priceline? Have you bought uh, Apple? Have you? Nobody's even talking about this stuff. We're at all time. In the history of the, the universe of the Dow Jones, we are trading at all-time highs. And you know, there's, a, there's something that's, that was said once that I thought was just fabulous. 
when you go into a store, you don't want to, you don't ask what's the worst what's the worst thing you've got. I want it and I want it at a bargain. You would look for the best quality, and you want that at a bargain. Stocks that make new highs tend to continue making new highs. Stocks that make new lows tend to continue making new lows. And of course, that will change. But that's what you've got to be thinking. So this is very, very positive action in the market. Oh, it's quiet out there. Not a single call at 877-927-6648. And I'm going to do something else just be just just because XLF. I only ever talk about the XLF. I really should. I don't know why I don't talk about it because I'm so busy with all these other things. The XLF. We're in leg C in the weekly chart. We're in leg C in the monthly chart. And we're in leg B in the daily chart. Let me just quickly give you my scenario that I'm looking at here. I think that the, I, I think. Yeah, look at this pattern. You remember this? Look how easy it is. You go one line, whoosh, another line. Whoosh. What's the pattern? My CD introducing the Chaffin Wave methodology is called the falling axe. Why? Because it looks like an axe that's on its at an angle. If I can just get that, there it is. Very simple pattern: ice cream cone with a point up. Okay. That, look at that pattern. And you break out decisively, you can expect a one to one, a one to one potential. And there it is. So the XLF is only a leg B and has the potential for at least 18.27. The high today was 18.20 in this particular move. Then it should pull back. It doesn't have to, it's almost there. It doesn't have to get there. I'm just saying this is, this is the way I like to do expansions. And not only that, the stochastics at 85% on balance volume is acting very well. Uh, relative strength is moving up, not overbought. And you've got a cross, a positive cross in the MACD. I like that. So when you're looking at this particular chart, I believe that with the bank sector, the financial sector acting well, and I'm remiss, I have to apologize to my subscribers, I kept talking about wanting to buy the XLF, but I've been looking at other areas, of course, and, and you know, we can't cry, but at the same time, I, I did want to have a bank, and we will, next pullback. I don't want to, see, I don't want to be adding anything right at this particular moment, getting a little too, well, I do want to add, but only very selectively on pullbacks, because my suspicion is that when we make this particular top, in the weekly chart, we're going to finally get a weekly peak, Dow peak uh, B, XLF peak C, and that's going to be kind of sharp, swift, and a little scary. And then I think we go, because of the monthly charts, I think we go to higher highs. So we've got Mohammed in Glendale, California, uh, Colorado, Glendale CA, CO. Hi, Mohammed, how are you? Good morning. How are you, Basil? I remember we had the whole story, but now I can't remember if it says CA and then it says CO. You're in Glendale, where? Right, California. CA. California, yes, California. And you wanted to look at? Um, XCO. Ah, there's an X missing. XCO. Okay, great. X, XCO Resources. Oh, interesting. This is my kind of chart. I like this. Um, so, I mean, I like this kind of pattern. It's only at $7.11. We will be back. Exco Resources Inc. trading at 7.11. Symbol is XCO. We'll be back with Mohammed in Glendale. Dow is up 42. SP's up 287. Be right back after these messages. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN.
Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success and it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today, because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Just finishing up this chart. Just didn't take me very long to do this entire chart. Okay. So what we're looking at here is XCO, and this is called XCO Resources. I'm not sure what the resource, but it doesn't matter to me. The chart itself made a beautiful H pattern, double bottom. 565 was the weekly low. Back um, on the week of the 27th of April of 2012, it goes to a PD. This is just a fantastic example of the restart, and I'll be teaching this. I'm using this one on Saturday as, a, as an example of a restart. It comes down from PD at 9.08. It comes down with a higher low at 5.97 for the H pattern. That's a very big positive, and it comes down to trough D, and now it's trading at $7.12 in leg A up in the weekly. Monthly, horrible, but in fact... It might be horrible, 734 and 597, no, 565, same thing. So the weekly chart is going to improve tremendously if it's able to close March uh, anywhere above, say, 752. So that's looking out. Do you have, you have a long position in this, right? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, very good. And did you just get it recently, last couple of days? Um. Yeah, it's been actually a while. I've been in uh, for maybe a couple of months. I took a little beating. Oh, uh, I mean, okay. Yeah. That's why I asked. Yeah. Now, okay, then yeah. you have to have a different psychology. The psychology would be if you got in just a few days ago, just a perfect buy with the MACD 
beautifully rallying since mid-January while the price is coming down. Great divergence. Stochastic holds well. MACD's doing well. Everything's just great. Now, it looks good. And my target on this would be somewhere in within, um, if it's able to close and keep leg C up even tomorrow and get somewhere into the 726 area, there's a really good chance 754 would be my target for mid-March. Now, the whole thing is dependent on it holding $6.70 to $6.80. At any point, if it breaks that, that's going to stall the rally. But I think you've got a good stock. If you had got into it just recently, I'd say fabulous. But because you've got a price that's higher up, I'm going to make a suggestion. If this thing starts to break under $6.76, I know you don't want to hear it. <laughs> but if it breaks under, say, six seventy to six fifty. You've got to take something off because then it's going to stall. But the way it's looking right now, I think it has a really good chance to get up into the to the higher sevens. And if that holds into the close on, uh, of March, then there's a really good chance that the, the high, uh, peak B high of $9.08 will become the focus. I think you've got something here. It's very interesting stock. And uh, it's, got, it's heavily traded. It's got a lot of volume. I think it's a good stock. So uh, hold on, and but be careful. If it does pull back, you've got to take something off, okay? Okay, thank you so much. Th uh, thank you for, for, thank for calling, Mohammed. Have a great weekend. Uh, Dan in Miami. Dan, we've got just a moment here. You want to talk about? General Electric, I'm looking for a place to add. I, I sold everything on the uh, 120 today. Uh, buy or add, where, where was a good spot for that? I think GE is going higher. I like it very much. I think this is the poor man's Dow stock for those money for those fund managers have missed out on the big winners. I think it gives a great dividend. gave gave us in our portfolio a great dividend the other day. I like it very much. I would add to it based on the 120 minute chart A B C. Yeah, it could go a little high. Uh, hmm, I wouldn't have actually gone out, but if you're a short term trader, okay, that's fine. I would I would like you to think about getting in between 2350 and 2330. And you could have about a thirty to a thirty-five cent stop. But the only reason I, I sold it was I, I bought it wrong. I bought it, chased it up a little bit, so I'm looking for a place to. Oh, okay, now that's money buy. management. That's different. So, okay, you know what I I'm going to ask though. you? I'm going to ask you to do this. Think about starting just a tiny little bit here at twenty-three seventy-four, knowing that you want to add to it at about twenty-three fifty-three to twenty-three forty-three just in case it gets away in the next day or two. But just a tiny little bit, and then you can add to it, okay? Cool, thanks. Thank you, Dan. Thanks for calling, and I'll be back tomorrow. Stay tuned for Larry Pesavento, and don't forget about my, my seminar coming up Saturday and my opening call. Look at the front page of TFNN.